What's going on? Cross <laughs> fit better way. Crossfit better way. Gunner's excited it's Saturday. Um, so anyway, it is Saturday. It is the weekend. Shh, hush, buddy. So uh, what we're getting into today is a little bit complicated in the sense that it has three pieces. Um, we're gonna, I'll demo everything except the calories on the row because I know you guys pretty much at this point know how to do that. Um, so I don't need to go into detail there. But um, let's talk a little bit about what we're getting ourselves into. So we've got three couplets with a five minute rest in between each. So the first couplet, three, two, one, go, I'm going to go 15 deadlifts at 275 for guys, 185 for gals, then 30 GHD, then 12 deadlifts, then 24 GHD, then nine deadlifts, then 18 GHD. Now this alone, the GHD sit-ups, Unless I've done GHD sit-ups in a workout before and I know how they feel and I know that I can handle volume, I won't be doing GHD sit-ups. So we're going to replace these with ab mat sit-ups for a lot of our athletes. Um, but for those of us that are at that level and we're ready for GHDs, then we will do them there. But I'll talk about the technique on what that looks like here in a second. Um, so we go back and forth on the deadlifts and the GHDs. When I'm done, I rest for five minutes. So it is with a running clock. Um, my second piece, I go into a 975 set of ring muscle ups and 18, 14, 10 of burpees to a six inch target. Or for a lot of us, depending on how we set up our rings for our muscle ups, burpees to your rings is probably going to be an accurate target, give or take, uh, depending on the height that you prefer on your rings when you're doing your muscle ups. So we go, yeah, nine muscle ups, 18 burpees, seven, 14, five, 10. Rest five minutes again. Then we're ending with a 30, 20, 10 rep scheme of wall balls and calories on the rower. All of this is gonna be four time and at the very end, we're gonna do total time minus our rest. So whatever our total time is, minus the 10 minutes of rest that we have in the middle of this workout, the intention behind this, go hard and fast every time it's time to work. So they're smaller sets. You should be able to churn through some of these now. People see 275 on the bar and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can do 15 unbroken. That's okay, do eight and seven. Um, on the 12, go six and six, or maybe seven and five. On the nine, maybe I go three sets of three, or maybe I go four, three, two, or something like that to get through my deadlift. Um, the GHDs, just just do them, just get them over with. Um, for the, for the muscle-ups and stuff like that, I'll expect more athletes kind of break some stuff up here. Our more proficient athletes will definitely go through that. This is the same rep scheme as Amanda. So if you're familiar with that benchmark where you do ring muscle-ups and squat snatches, then um, this will feel oddly familiar, obviously with burpees instead. So that way we're just gonna spike that heart rate a little bit more and have you get back on the rings and do more muscle-ups. It'll be fun. Um, and then with the wall balls and calorie row. So let's talk a little bit, starting with that deadlift GHD combo. The deadlift is pretty straightforward. Conventional deadlift. Feet are about hip width distance. Um, camera on this end? Yeah. Angle is always good. Uh, so, feet are about hip width distance. I want to grab onto that bar to where my knees are not going to have any competition. And then from here, I'm just standing up tall, making sure that when I finish, my shoulders are behind the bar and I'm standing up nice and tall where I can squeeze my glutes and turn those on. So if I'm moving fast and I'm only getting here, congratulations, you're almost done with the deadlift, but you didn't do a deadlift, now it's done. Cool, all right. So we've got our deadlift standards there. Big thing to think about, especially it being a little bit heavier weight than what we normally do for reps in a workout. Um, really focus on midline bracing. So when we're getting set for that deadlift, I want you to think about breathing into your belly. So diaphragmatic breathing is what we're working with in order to create some more of what you call intra-abdominal pressure. Um, so the more that I breathe into my belly, big breath, try to fill that diaphragm with some air and then brace. That's gonna help support my trunk, my overall trunk. So as I'm pulling off the ground, I'm not rounding my back as that's happening. Uh, if you're in the gym and you're working out and you ever hear a coach while you're deadlifting tell you to drop that bar, it's because they see something unsafe and they want you to drop it before you hurt yourself. So for any reason, while you're under duress and you're trying to go hard and fast in this workout, if a coach ever says drop it, listen to them. We're not doing it because we don't want you to finish. We're not doing it because we want to slow you down. We're not. We're doing it because we see something that is a red flag to us saying if that athlete keeps moving like that, something could go terribly wrong. 
So trust us. That's why we're here. That's why we help guide you. That's why we help coach you. That's why we're here to make you better and correcting those faults and things like that. Sometimes having an athlete completely stop what they're doing is better than to let them keep moving and potentially risk something happening. Um, so once we get through the deadlifts, we're gonna get on our GHD. When I climb on my GHD, pop my feet in, I should have it to where my hips are hanging off the back side of the GHD. I'm gonna go all the way down and reach for the floor without really hyper extending my back. So I'm not lazy in that extension back here. And the big thing that I'm doing when I'm doing a GHD setup is it should be initiated from my quads. My legs are the first thing to move on the up. So as I come down and I touch the floor, I'm, if you watch my legs, I'm squeezing my legs, my knees will move down, and that initiates the up. So that is utilizing my hip flexors and my quads to move my pelvis, to rotate my pelvis and pull me up. If I just lay back and sit up, I default to using my, a muscle called my psoas that um, it attaches at the top of your femur, it wraps over your pelvis and attaches at your low back, and that muscle, um, you can overwork it. You can actually injure your low back and do things like that because of where the attachment points from the psoas are if you're doing your GHDs wrong. So if I watch an athlete go, and I'm looking for that aggressive drive in their leg on the up. I want to see that every time. What I don't want to see is the legs are in this position on the way down and then they don't move. I'll demo one that's done the wrong way. So watch my legs, totally didn't move. If I see that, that tells me that athlete doesn't know how to do a GHD properly and they probably shouldn't be doing them. So um, again, watching for that aggressive drive from my knees, from my quads, I'm squeezing my quads to initiate that movement. You can see that movement happening on my legs when I'm coming back up. Um, totally okay to use your arms for a little bit extra momentum as well. Um, try to shoot to touch the pads every time you get up, that way it's full range of motion. Touching the floor at the bottom is the standard. Um, if I'm a really short athlete, because some of these GHDs are a little taller, adding something with a little bit of elevation to bring the floor or bring that target closer to you is good. That way you don't end up in hyperextension all the time. Um, but again, not all of us will be using these in the gym today. It'll just depend on where we're at as an athlete because even, what is that? 30, 54, 60, 72, 72 reps. That's a lot of GHDs in one workout. So if I'm not ready for that kind of volume, I won't be doing them. If I've never done that many, that many GHDs or I haven't been training GHDs or anything else like that, um, it's totally okay to scale those things back. And the intention is to move hard, is to go hard and move quickly and be efficient on these movements. So if sometimes scaling is the right way to make sure an athlete is efficient, scaling back to ab mat sit-ups is not, it doesn't mean you're a failure, it doesn't mean you're a lesser athlete, it just means you're not ready for that kind of volume for a GHD sit-up. Uh, because they can really destroy your core if you're not ready, and I want you to be functional for the rest of your weekend. So, that's our GHD sit-up. Next is gonna be our ring muscle-ups. So the muscle-up being starting with that arms extended in the bottom, and then dipping out over the top. When I'm doing a muscle-up, the turnover is generally the hardest part. I feel like LeBron over here. Uh, generally the hardest part is the turnover. So I want to be really aggressive with my turnover. As I'm pulling on those rings, I'm pulling the rings close to my chest. I'm pulling down low because I need to get my shoulders over. And as I send my head through, my head going through happens really quickly. Um, so the other thing to think about with muscle ups is our grip. If I don't have a muscle up yet, I really want to work at establishing a false grip. A false grip is done. Let's just say these are my rings. I'm overreaching on my ring as I'm hanging down. That ring is resting on the crook of my wrist. So all of my weight is right there on the crook of my wrist. I'm overreaching. So you see how my knuckles are through the ring? So I'm not, I'm not hanging here. 
One of the problems that, that'll happen with a lot of athletes is they see a muscle up and they're like, oh cool, I'll just jump up, hang on the ring, and I'm gonna try to get there. Well, there's this point where you need to turn your hand over to be in a position to dip out. Well, if I false grip, once I, let's say, uh, let's say that I'm extended at the bottom, as I come up and over the top of the ring, notice my hand didn't have to move. So now I'm in a great position to be able to dip out of that, of that muscle up at the top. If I'm dead hanging in this position, if I don't move my hand, as I come up and try to find that dip position, I'm not gonna get there. I need to have my hand turn over. And what can happen is as athletes develop proficiency in the muscle up, you can start to do kind of a faux fall grip where you'll overreach, knuckles will be on top of the ring, and then as you're popping up, because of that aggressive kip, you have that moment where you turn your hand over and you're in a position to dip out. That's not, that's a more advanced thing. Um, if I'm still learning muscle ups for the first time, I wanna get to the point where I can do maybe three to five muscle ups unbroken while maintaining a false grip before I start to experiment with that faux false grip and what it's like to just jump up, grab the rings and, and actually complete a successful muscle up. Cause I need to be more effective with my kip to have that turnover actually take place. So with that, let me, let me do my best to demo um, a muscle up here. So arms extended at the bottom is important. They must be extended. If I start with my arms bent, that's not a good rep. Now if I get my arms extended and then I bend my arms and then I muscle up, that's fine but I need to make sure I hit that extension first, and then arms are gonna be fully locked out at the top, so arms are nice and straight at the top of that dip. I'm not dipping out and then falling backwards before I hit extension. So again, up and over the top, be aggressive with your head. It's all about kip, like look up for the ceiling, big aggressive kip, look for the floor, or look for your toes, are gonna to be good verbal cues that you can use to get an athlete to do a muscle. So arms fully extended at the top. That's one. Cool. All right. So ring muscle ups and then burpees to a six inch target. Now six inches, meaning if I were to raise my hands above my head, my target is at least, keyword at least six inches above my head. Now, if I were to be using this pull-up bar, clearly not six inches, not above my head, sorry, above my hands, the ends of my fingers. So clearly not six inches above my fingers. My rings are probably a little more so than six inches. But if I were to use these, that means I don't have to move where I'm at. So if I were to do my nine muscle ups, I'm gonna drop down into my burpees, chest and thighs hit the floor, I'm gonna jump up and touch my rings every single time. That forces me to be a little more conscious of where I'm jumping. It will slow your burpees down a little bit, but ultimately not that hard. But to a target is something we've seen come up in the open in the past. We talk about seven minutes of burpees or anything else like that. Those things have a target. So don't be surprised if those things pop up maybe come February. Um, so we've got our muscle ups, we've got our burpees. The last thing is our wall ball or our calorie row. I'll talk about the wall ball a little bit. The calorie row, I trust that you guys know what we're doing there. So the wall ball itself, if I'm looking at open standards, my rep starts when I'm standing tall. So what that means is I can't pick up my med ball and go into a squat and have that count as a good rep. My back squat doesn't start here, does it? My back squat starts when I unrack the bar and I'm starting at the top and it's down and up. The squat in the, in the wall ball is the same thing. So I need to pick my med ball up, find that front rack position, and my rep starts here. So I'm moving from my 10 foot line, hip crease below the knee, that was a bad rep. Here we go. And trying to hit that 10 foot mark every single time. In our gym, if you were to look at the stripes on the wall, the purple line is, the, is a nine foot line, the bottom of that is the nine foot line. The bottom of the black stripe above it is the 10 foot line. So as long as the fat part of my med ball is past the bottom of that line, I'm good. So I don't have to hit the center of the stripe or anything else like that. If you do, you know you're killing it and you know you're hitting where you need to hit. But as long as the fat side of that ball is past the bottom of that line, 
then I'm hitting my I'm hitting my height there. And the other thing that can be a limiting factor in the wall ball is if I don't hit depth. So still hip crease below the top of the knee at the bottom of that squat every time. A lot of times athletes will focus too much on the target and not enough on the squat. And then you end up getting wall balls that look a little something like this. And while you're kind of doing the thing, you're missing three quarters of your squat. So make sure we're squatting low and we're throwing that ball nice and high on those med balls, um, or on the wall balls, excuse me. And uh, then on the calorie row, it's just about get on that rower. It's only 30, 20, and 10. Pull a lot harder than you want to. You're almost done. It's the last couplet of that workout. Leave everything on the table. Um, big, hard, strong pulls. Make sure you finish your pulls. Squeeze your legs at the end of every single pull. That way you're getting all of that power into the flywheel. If I bend my knees early, we have a tendency to lose some power on every single stroke. So, um, yeah, that's what we're getting ourselves into. Let's go back to the board. We'll talk through it one more time just so we're all on the same page and we'll get to it. So, again, three, two, one, go. I've got 15 deadlifts, 30 GHD, 12, 24, 9, 18. I rest for five minutes. At the end of my five minute rest, I've got nine ring muscle ups, 18 burpees to a six inch target, seven, 14, five, 10. Rest for five minutes again. Then I go 30, 20, 10 of wall balls and calorie row time. My score is my total time minus the 10 minutes of rest. Should be a good time. A lot of things going on today, a lot of different movements, a lot of different equipment, all that sort of stuff. But each one being fairly small sets, should be able to go hard and fast every single time it's time to work. This one should be fun. I'm looking forward to it, you guys. So uh, with that, it's the weekend. Let's get after it.